Hey guys, welcome back to the farm. Woke up at five this morning, started processing the last of another batch of our Cornish Cross. Just finished those up. I've got those in the coolers waiting to be packaged. We'll start packaging those in just a little bit. I've got to finish feeding. Today we're gonna to talk about being almost halfway, actually more than halfway through our Cornish Cross season. We've had a request to see all these piglets for a whole video. I'll do my best to get you some piglet time. But first we're gonna talk about our chicken season, why we're raising Cornish, and what we've got left. Let's go check them out. All right, checking out our newest batch of Cornish Cross over here in the brooder. Let's get this up so we can see them. I got it. And uh, here is the latest 100 Cornish that we have. And they are all doing well. We have yet to lose a bird and uh excited about these so we this was our last batch of 100 and we've got two more batches coming we've got a couple weeks off we've timed it out so we are just not constantly processing and processing birds these birds are a week old today and uh doing very well so we have two more batches coming and those will each be batches of 135 so we've been doing cornish now for probably four to five years and we've been doing it for markets for just two years. So we were just raising them for ourselves for a while, and this is our second full-time season with running uh, farmer's markets and being able to sell our birds at the market. So the reason we choose these birds is they grow fast and quick and give you the biggest uh, output of meat for the time and money that you put into them. So. We do enjoy them. A lot of people do not like the Cornish cross because um, they do grow so big and fast. And um, But for your money, and if that's what you're trying to do, even if it was just for our family, I would be raising Cornish cross. Just, just specifically for the time it takes, eight weeks, and the amount of meat that each of these birds produce. They are a fantastic chicken. And that is debated on all over chicken pages and things like that. But for us, the Cornish Cross is the way to go. We're gonna head out to the pasture, check out the uh, two flocks we've got out on pasture. All right, first group we're gonna check out is our flock that is the oldest out on pasture. They're about four weeks. And if you guys haven't followed along very often, we do run them in these 10 by 20 chicken tractors. We've got a video on these. We can put that right there. Uh, just a 10 by 20 carport with a frame we built around it so they can stay safe in there and we just run them up and down our property. And uh, you can tell we have not had rain in a while. The grass is having a hard time being as dry as it is. But uh, here are the four week old Cornish and they are growing out nicely. So we are just before feed time. Once we uh, get off camera here, we will come out and feed these chickens and we will move them forward off of their manure again. And it, the system has just worked out very well for us so now that i just finished that last flock of birds we've got about a two and a half three week break actually almost so these guys must be going on in about five weeks if my dates are right so i think i've got about three weeks off so these are five week old and before i need to process again and uh like i said we're just over halfway through our season we've processed um i think just about 600 maybe a little more um, we have had some losses, uh, more than we would like, but that is sometimes what happens with these Cornish, um, especially when it's cold or hot or they're very, fin they can be very finicky, but uh, I'm not trying to scare you away from raising them. They are a great chicken if you're looking just for meat production. So um, we will do just over a thousand birds this year. Um, that leaves us ample chicken for us, and uh, we're able to still have a chicken available for our customers through some of the winter before we sell out. So uh, we get the question all the time, you guys ship? We do not ship chicken right now. We just sell local farm pickup and at a couple markets that we do, and that has been working out good for our small size. Like I said, we just do around a thousand birds, and uh, I was looking at the sheets, and I was like, I can't believe we're already over halfway through our uh, meat bird season so our years don't go January to uh, January to December our our year goes through our meat bird season it seems like so 
like when we were teaching, our years always went from the start of the school year to the end of the school year. That was our year, and now it's a uh, change to meat bird season. So these are the five-week-old Cornish doing well. Like I said, they're going to get moved off their manure here and uh, move to their new spot before they get fed. And these are the ones we just brought out. And I believe they are three weeks old now. So they are doing well too. Got them out, they've adapted well to being outside. Way better than being in that brooder. Getting most of their feathers in now. Still got their little yellow fluffy heads, but doing well out here. I do have this five gallon water out here for them. We are running out of pans. And uh, so that's what we've been using for these guys. But yeah, we do the Cornish, quick growing, delicious. Um, I mean, I'm not saying other birds aren't delicious, but the amount of meat you get from these is the main reason we do the Cornish. So seems like any animal that you've raised the right way, fed the right food, got outside on pasture is definitely going to taste way better than anything you can get at a store or anywhere else. So it's been a crazy year. We've, we've, uh, obviously adapted some of our practices. We're getting more efficient. Um, I do pretty much all the processing. Brooklyn actually has come out and helped me with some evisceration, which has helped a big deal. And then in the evenings, once Jamie's off work, we do all the packaging and labeling here ourselves. And my mother-in-law has come and helped with that, which has been super nice. Um, I think one of the biggest things that's helped us be efficient is uh, lowering our numbers on butcher day. We usually do about 25 to 30. The most we've ever done in a day is 60, and that is a load of work for two people to do. That was the day Jamie and I were the only ones working, and we got them all done. But just doing a lower number and processing a couple more days is so much easier. So we always get the question, why don't you take them to a processor? Well, the processor around here usually is about $10 if you want your bird pieced up, $10 pieced and packaged. And so we don't want to lose those profit margins and it helps us keep our prices down a little bit because we're not paying processing fees. So that is one of the reasons we do it ourselves. The other reason we do it ourselves, when you take them to the processor, obviously it's all about speed. They're just trying to get them done quickly and there's nothing wrong with that. But the packaging just doesn't look as good. The whole birds, they put them in a big old tub to freeze them and they're dented and they just don't look very good and we want to be proud of our product so when we're doing it ourselves we know that the packaging looks good everything has gone over kind of with a fine tooth comb we've had many comments about how clean our meat is and nobody they don't have to cut any of the fat or any yuck off the meat when they get it and that's something we are proud of that uh, you're paying a good premium amount for a premium product and you want it to look good so that's why we do all of it in-house. Um, we feel we have more control over it that way. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier to pack them all up and take them in, but uh, we'd rather it look nice and know exactly what our customers are gonna be getting. So, had a lot of requests to do a whole video about piglets. I don't know, maybe one day we'll do that, but piglets are going to be moving here shortly. Like I said, we've got 19 piglets in here. 19 piglets is a lot of poop, so they do get moved more often. These guys will probably just be rotating around. We're gonna mow here and then just kind of move them around in a big circle until they're ready to go to their permanent homes or into permanent pastures with the other groups of our pigs. So I'm gonna jump in here and <laughs> see. I'm gonna try and run backwards without falling. <laughs> you can see ah there we go we just got to tire them out a little bit so we can hang out in here but uh i can't even remember hardly remember boys and girls i'm gonna run a little bit more to get them out of here these ones have already lost interest but we've got some excited ones so we have kept some of these boars um they're very <laughs> They are very nice looking boars. We do have a lot of barrows in here. They just didn't grow like we want. We're looking for the best ones. And so we do have some barrows, but uh, we've got old bullseye butt here. It's still a boar. 
he is just too nice to castrate. Um, so obviously that's a permanent change. <laughs> and uh, he's been turning out really nice and also a brother from his litter right here. He's a little bit bigger than Bullseye Butt. They're both nice solid pigs, but we did not want to castrate them at this time. We still have a couple more weeks where we could get it done before they get a little too big. He's got that big black leg on him. He's just really good, solid looking boar. So a couple of them are still intact. Most of them are castrated and the rest obviously are females. There we go. I think I'm more tired than they are. How you doing, bud? You're always coming to say hi. You're always coming to say hi. I think you're a boar too. He's a nice, big, long ginger boar but it's hard to keep track of them. Sometimes, obviously, you got two kids, you call them the wrong names. You got 19 pigs out here. Good luck keeping track every time. The girls, Jamie and Brooklyn, do that a lot better than I do, but what an awesome looking group of pigs. Different colors, different patterns, and uh, we're very happy with the litters. We won't have litters for a couple months here, um, and that is a good thing. Um, people ask why all the pigs. Well, we do process the pork. Um, we do have a good little breeding program here. We feel, obviously, it's always improving and we're getting better the more we learn. Um, but we just enjoy the pigs. I've always said if we didn't sell some of these pigs, I would be, we would be fine with it. We enjoy them so much. Um, a lot of people can't believe we eat the pork too, but the pork is delicious and that is the whole purpose of our farm is to eat better so here are the piglets obviously <laughs> not gonna get a whole video of piglets but maybe i'll work on that we'll get a piglet camera out here and just watch what they do during the day so these are actually the tweeners all the ones that are weaned from moms we do have some younger ones in with moms still i feel like we haven't checked those out very often so let's run up to the farming barn before we let you go today All right, so we've only got two pigs left in the farrowing barn, and that is uh, Thistle, and that is Two Louise. So it looks like everybody's in here right now. Here is Thistle, and uh, if you guys remember, hi Thistle. I'm uh, in talks with Jamie. Thistle has not. This is her first little litter of piglets and she has not had any registered, or this is her first litter, so we haven't registered any of them. So when you don't have any registered yet, you can change their names. And uh, we've talked about this before. Thistle does not have a care in the world. Her tail is always flapping when she comes outside. And I know somebody said you look like you're an 80 year old first time mama, but you're not. <laughs> So uh, I've been talking to Jamie about changing her name to Dory, the fish from Finding Nemo, just because she seems always happy, doesn't have a care in the world. Uh, so what do you think? Should we change her name to Dory or should we leave it Thistle? Put that in the comments below. <laughs> but anyway, she's just a happy pig. Every time she comes outside, that tail is flying a mile a minute. So here are her piglets. The other reason I want to do that you guys know that she took on two extra piglets. She only had three. And uh, this tri, tri pig here and this big belted one here are actually two Luises. And they came over here and she just adopted them. There goes that tail. Not a care in the world. And she has been nursing them. And that is good because two Luis, she's right here with her piglets. We'll check them out in a minute since they're all run outside. She had nine. So for her to nurse nine, yes, she's very capable to do it, but it's going to be a lot easier on her, on her body and just her whole makeup to only have to do one, two, three, four, five, six. I believe we did lose one. So she's only got six over there instead of nine. So a lot easier, but these three right inside here are Dory's or thistles and the two headed outside are actually two Luis's pigs. So you can see uh, thistles have those real waggy tails. But here's two Luis and her piglets. All of them looking great. They've been down in the wado, wallow. You can tell covered with mud. How are you doing two Luis? Oh, I'm gonna get my camera muddy. I know it's time for dinner and I'm out here talking. I just wanted to show your babies. They're all doing good. 
enjoying the wallows. It is a little bit cooler. It's only 81 today, which has been nice. We've been in the upper 80s and we've got a breeze. There's a face full of, our picture full of muddy faces right there, huh? So the littlest piglets are doing good. I was gonna tell you how old they are, but of course I wouldn't remember. Let's check out Thistle taking a dip here this afternoon. Piglets looking beautiful out here in the green grass and sun. So anywhere there is an update, I can't believe it. Halfway through the season already, although as you know in farming, small farming, there's never an end. There's always stuff to do, but our chicken season does come to an end, which is a nice thing. So anyway, guys, I hope you're having a fantastic week. Make sure you make the change and we'll see you on the next video. What do you think, Dory? Should we change your name to Dory? Or you just wanna eat? Yeah, let's get you some feed.